Hello everyone, this is Fantastic Worlds, and I do apologize for the abrupt ending on episode one of the series, but it turned out that I had over two hours of footage recorded, and I thought that asking you to ask to sit through two hours at one sitting was a little too much. I mean, as it is, I prefer a 45 minute to one hour maximum episode myself, and this series has been getting a little over that. So anyways, we're going to continue with the second half of the General Apostle run, and we're going to jump right into the action. Here we go. Okay, so... Cash is becoming a bit of an issue at the moment. The attack on me did drain me down to zero, and I'm barely keeping ahead of the curve here when it comes to the money, and there's obviously other issues as well. So what I've done is I've actually brought back the position of Glover and Glover, but you see, this time around, I just ain't kidding anymore. I am sending... Oh, great, another Mystique. Big deal. Uh, I can use that for a painting. I am sending my minion to seduce... Oh, God. To seduce Mr. Glover. And I'm sending Rhaenyra this time. Basically, I'm not dealing with his annoyance anymore. We're going to disgrace him. Everybody has a weakness for one particular pleasure. I will send him. And you understand the many natures of pleasure. They will likely succeed. Yeah, I want him out of the way. And I just want to have all the cash I need. It's That's so much to ask, really. 23 seconds from now. And I think I'm about to get a good dose of tentative evidence over here to deal with. Yeah, there's always a problem. All right, so... Boom, deal with that. And boom. The usual. And always trying to keep ahead of the curve when it comes to work. Get into that in a later in a moment. Anyways. Nope, he missed the notoriety somehow. Wow. Okay, so we'll at least have an incompetent cop, but let's see how the seduction occurs. Okay, Rose, you go back in. Yeah, I'm keeping her at targeting people. All right. Offering temptation to an annoyance. Let's see if this works. <laughs> yeah, barely keeping ahead of the hunger curve here. There we go. Minion has returned. They found a particular temptation to which our annoyance succumbed readily. The small cost of utter destruction of the reputation. Yes. So... Thank you, Renara. You are the bestest minion ever. So, with that done, I'm just going to basically start piling on the uh, money from working at Glover, which will also allow me to do other things like collect vitality for other purposes as well. So, yeah, this is, like I said, me not kidding around. I did kind of let the Alden thing go around a long time in the original episodes because I wanted to demonstrate, you know, different ways of doing things. But now we're kind of moving quickly here. So, yeah, I'm stopped kidding around. So, anyways, move on to the next one. Okay, so let's discuss the first part of the Evening Isle Express. Now, this is when you have to start getting the languages. And like I said, by using targeted expeditions, you can actually get the languages a lot faster. Now, the thing is, the first one was the Congregation of... Oh, God, I'm trying to pronounce this. Congregation of St. Felix of Sharun. Sharun? Shirun. Anyways... The Congregation. In other words, it's a Tier 2 expedition, and the obstacle is monks, which means you must deceive or slaughter them. Because I didn't have enough deceptive, I killed them all. Um, the second, well, that will give you the Greek card, plus it'll give you the configuration you have here, which is, these are all at 4, and this is at 6, now uh, for lore level. Now, I'm normally trying to avoid the lower lore, but right now I'm trying to set up down here the... <clears throat> money for nothing cards is like a money system i'd like to say it where you simply start pumping out um commissions for coins that you uh, you sell over at the auction house you saw enough of that last time but yeah right now in order to do that i have to have everything at level six and as you can see we are getting there but these will actually help a lot more when we get to the guar in we will get the book that allows latin okay so that's the next step that's tier four um, unique. Then we move to the Key Hunter's Garret. Now, the reason we do that is that that one is going to have the Journal of Alexander... What's his name? The Journal... I'm not looking for it. The Journal of Alessandro Lacroix. Now, what that does is it allows you to access the language of Fusine. Now, that's the first advanced language you're going to get in this particular path. Once you have the... Um, Fusine Scholar card, you then move on to 
the Chateau Revelan, which is another tier six one, the continent one. Now, the reason you do the Chateau is that that one has the high, high mysteries of the innermost chamber of our church solar, which is a level 10 lore for lantern. Now, with that, you'll note that I am going to be doing something a little weird here, is that I'm going to combine both the Ignatius Rite and the Mansus Glimpse, because once I have the level 10 lore, I'm not going to need anything else. So level 10 lore is only so I can open the last two dream doors. And then at that point, we'll have a level six. Um, the uh, We'll have this one here to be level six, which means that we get closer to establishing the level six homogeny that we need here. So as you say, it's kind of a lot of detailed planning here. But after, the, after that particular motion, we will move on to the next step of the Express. But as you notice, we're already getting a lot further than we did on the original episodes. Then I was going over them slowly to indicate to show you how to do certain things. Now, this is kind of the Express. And as you can see, by seducing Mr. Alden and blackmailing him to remove him from my job, I have cash. I have a lot of cash now, well, compared to what I had to before. No longer starving and I will be accumulating cash quickly that way and even quicker when I get the um, commission set up so yeah even though I have an immortal trying to kill me right now things are looking pretty good okay so as the money has gone up I've gone back to the original plan of trying to drain the shop dry here selling the books that aren't useful to me and keeping the books that are now this is one you're gonna have to be looking out for the Vieta's a conundra because that's a level six moth that's kept from the bookstore okay so I just want to make a quick note of that be sure you know which books you want to toss because you can't get them back and which books you want to keep because like the whole point of this is to get the headquarters with the library so we can do any advanced links that we're going to have to do I don't see it having to happen a lot like I said I've kind of been setting up so we just grab the the lore we need but you want to have the level six lures as quick as possible to set up this because that'll allow me to handle madame bichette's moth here grab a silver spintra and increase the money train going even faster and that is what it's all about at this point okay so going through Merlin's bookstore and the targeted run another one you want to keep is wrapped in the king yep uh, this one's going to give you a level six heart and again it's going to start getting you ready to be able to do all of the commissions as you can see I have a level six requirement for this commission which means I can at least reset the count now remember when you have two of the appropriate kind one of these guys can just start cycling for example now that I have a level six knife and I will have a level six uh, heart by that point I'll be able to just keep him going once I, and once I get everybody going well then it's money for nothing again and I can quit the day job anyways okay quick stop on the route here to give a couple points. One, I'm about to be attacked by what's called Distant Lights. Now, I'm going to let that run and do so. Second, I just happened to come across one of the Locksmith Dream cards by, uh, sorry, books by Teresa Gallimer. And while it's not immediately useful, for a particular Easter egg, I would recommend that you keep all of the ones by Teresa or called the Locksmith Dream. I'll show you later if I get when I get the opportunity. Oh, and there we go. Now, you'll notice, by the way, that that particular one gave us a fascination. Now the normal thing to do would be, of course, to drop it into the, uh, to drop it into the um, dream with the appropriate card and do so. But the problem is this one is considered poisoned. Great. Now I've got two. Make sure to keep them apart. Make sure this is a poisoned one. Now it's you. Well, nothing's going to show you that it's poisoned. But if you put drop this into the dream, you will in, you will basically give him a shot into your brain and give him a starlight of one. So what you do with this one is you put it far, far away from anything you might mistake it for, and you let it die. Now, if it happens to be grabbed by a fascination trap, you're actually fine because if the fascination trap disposes of it. Then it's then it's then it's gone and it's not poisoning anything. And if you use it for a spell as an influence, like I've done all the time to summon the uh, Grail minions, the um, Red Prophets, then it's considered consumed. It doesn't affect your cards. But do not ever place it into the dream cycle. Do not make that mistake. Now, these ones here, the normal ones, they're fine. But, you know, just in case at this point in the game, I usually say, screw it. We're just going to let these things burn or get rid of them in a different way. So I get kind of paranoid. Sometimes it'll even affect dreads. So, yeah, at this point, I like to have strum, but I'm a little behind in that cycle. So we're going to be dealing with it the best way that we can. OK, uh, moving on to the next step. Okay, so this is going to be a couple of things I'm going to run past you. Now, as you may have noticed, I have gotten level 6 lore in both Heart and Moth, which allowed me to get these commissions going, which will mean that I have the ability to start generating Spintra, which means I've pretty much given up the um, work 
at uh, Glover and Glover for the moment. I may have to go back to it at some point, but for now, we're going to try to do freeform. But the more important part of things is this, an attack on a follower. Basically, somebody, they've the, with the might now set, I believe, at level 2. What is he at? He or she is at level 2. They now can start attacking my followers or me directly. This is going to cause an injury. Injuries will have to be healed or they can die. Again, wounds, ironically, can make a person stronger because they'll get two points in either knife, knock, or winter as a result. And combined with a plus, combined with the ability for him to become exalted later because he is forged, he could become relatively powerful as a result. In the meantime, however, he's getting the snot beat out of him. So yeah, I don't think he's happy about his future upgrade here. But in the meantime, what's going to happen is that when I get the spintra, things are going to get a little interesting. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have to. Ooh deal with this in a moment hang on yeah we're starting the um run here as you begin to notice i'm going to start building up from level six to level eight to level ten until we can get through to uh, the things now the spintry give me an interesting possibility here i can skip the guar in because the guar in has the latin book if i choose to have the count remember he's a tutor teach me latin there he is latin scholar using a spintra I can skip the Guar itself, but I'm not going to do that simply because the inn has a has a class 10 heart uh, book. Now, and the thing is, I don't really need the class 10. I could probably get away without doing so. But grabbing it, the Latin, keeping the Spectra, and selling the other books will probably bring me a tidy profit. You know, might as well raid the place, and I've got the personnel to do it now. And then that'll move me on to the Key Hunter's Garret, which I can get the Fusine book from, as long as I have Latin. And that'll get me into the Chateau, which will get me the book with a level 10 lant lantern. So, again, and which will allow me to finish this commission down here. Now, I have an alternate view where I can use the Guar in. I think there's a level 6 lantern in it. But here's the important part. Rather than having me going through an entire chain to get the um, Sanskrit card... I can get it from her. Sulachana has the ability to teach me Sanskrit, and I use one of these to use have a good Sanskrit while simultaneously by like going for the Latin over here. And yeah, you can see the strategy for the um, Evening Isles Express is that you have multiple paths to do so. Uh, you can go either through a mentor or books. Now, I have specific, like I said, paths to get the books to going through the expeditions rather than trying to rely on just the uh, shops. And you also can use the mentors to get all of the mundane languages. Of course, the magical languages, which are ones that come off of it, like Fusin, have required the mundane to get so. So it's just step by step by step. But as you notice, we're ratcheting up the tension because now we're now capable of being attacked directly by the um, our enemy immortal. So yeah, tension is rising. Okay, under the what the fuck was that crazy shit scenario, there's something extraordinarily interesting that just happened. You see, you remember how I told you that you can defend against an attack using specific ones like Edge or Forge, and that if you do so, you'll increase their might, which is why I was going to let Ludlow be uh, wounded. But it turns out Ludlow's own five of Forge fought off the attack and increased the might. So I'm going to have a might of three very soon. I'm going to have the... I'm going to get walloped at this rate. But in any case, I thought you might want to know about that because there's a little trick I didn't even know about. Yeah, if they happen to grab an individual who has edge forge or whatever one else they were using to defend yourself winter i think then there's a chance they'll fight it off themselves whether or not you want them to do so so yeah some parts of this game just aren't under your control you just have to learn to adapt to that okay so i've referred to this to the um evening isles express but let's go over what that precisely is because the concept of the evening isles express is known as parallel paths now the object is to get to the higher level tiers 10 12 14 and get the books that have the higher level lore that you'll need now if you're doing a standard run an aspirant you're only really going to need the tool and the um and the level 14 or level 12 lore of the appropriate aspect it's rather simple to do now if you're doing a um a uh, apostle run like I am, there are specific tools, specific items, specific locations that you need. We'll go over that in the second part. This one's more about being the general 
concept of the Apostle Run, okay? So, first of all, let's go over the concept of what you will need when you finally get to the Evening Isles. You're, in order to access the higher level books, you require the mystic languages. In order to have the mystic languages, you require the basic languages. And when it comes to acquiring anything, be, uh, you'll notice in this run, there's at least two, usually three, you know, power three, different paths in order to be able to get it. Let's start with the Scholar Greek card, which I already have. Now, there are three ways I could have gotten that. One, I could randomly pull it from the bookstore. You notice I've been doing the buy one book. If it's not what I want, sell it back. It's kind of a sum zero option you have here because you buy it for one, you usually sell it for one, sometimes you sell it for two, sometimes you get nothing for it, but you average out at one over the long period of time and statistics tells you some zero game when you're doing this sort of thing is actually going to be in your favor because you are cycling through to get the books. You will only be spending the money when you get a book you want. So keep that in mind. Once you get enough of a cushion, so to speak, you should be able to uh, get what you need. Now, the other option to get Greek was to go to the tar go have a target expedition to get the book, which is located at the Congregation of St. Hugen, which is... Um, <clears throat> shall we say, uh, an easy one to do because the only only obstacle to have is watchers. These three ways you can do that. Again, the power of three. And then, of course, there is the fact that you can learn Greek from Anna Bichette. If I had gotten an iron spintra, because all you need is an iron one, I'd have learned it from her. But I'm not spending a silver one simply because these are worth eight funds and I totally, totally do not want um, I, to get poor. I mean, I actually got a hunger card in this run and I was like, oh my God, I've never seen those before because of how fast I'm going. So again, three options. For example, Sanskrit, we happen to randomly get the one from the bookstore. So I've saved it to study for a later time when I actually need it. I could have learned it from Silichana for an iron spintra. And of course, I could have gone to Grunwald's Permanent Circus, which is a level eight tier uh, expedition. Again, that's kind of our difficult ones, but let's go over the next power of three here. You see, when you're doing an apostle run, this is going to be specific to the Apostle run. You want to get your people up, your um, at chosen aspect people up to Exalted as quickly as possible, simply for the raw power they're going to provide you. So the thing is, is that there are three ways to do this. If you recall, when you've got initiation to Exalted status, you require a 21 intensity of the aspect. You start with 5, so 21 minus 5 is, is 16. Then you have another 12 that you're granted. This is assuming you're doing the basic run, and you're not doing something strange like the Mothman uh, run, which we'll go over later, how to do that. But now you need four more. And there are, of course, three ways of doing this. You can add an aspect of, I'm sorry, you can buy an influence of the aspect. Now for Forge, is, ironically, for each of the three runs, there's an easy, they actually have an easier way of doing each path separately. For the once one, influence is the easiest one. You have access to the stag door, and one of the easier draws you can get is a trembling heat, a level six influence, which, as you notice, allows me to initiate Ladlow to exalted status. Now, if you're doing a lantern run, the easiest one to do is the, is uh, go to Forgotten Mithrum, the tier two. Um, expedition, which will have a cracked Noonstone. Noonstone, and once you repair it with a Forge follower and a single fun, you have a four-point tool. Toss that in the trappings, and the great thing about that one is that's reusable, so you can actually get all three of your Lantern people up to level 10 rather quickly. Now, if you're doing a Grail like Apostle run, the ingredient is the easiest one to get, because it's you, it's known as Rose Pearl Dust, four-point ingredient, also a pigment that you can find in St. Agnes's Hospital, another Tier 2 expedition. Rather easy to do, because all they have is, I think, a curse. You'll need, a, you'll need to be able to handle that one. A couple of heart people will do that, and boom, you got it. Then you have all... Then you basically... Now, the thing is, of course, is that the one the Lantern has a reusable tool. The other ones, you're going to have to decide what you're going to do. Now, given that... Um, Given that both the Forge, you can keep getting the Trembling Heat and Lanterns reusable, those are the easiest ones to do so, that means that the Rose Pearl Dust, after this point, becomes a random draw for any Tier 4, Tier 6, Tier 8, or Tier... T or, sorry, Tier 2, Tier 4, Tier 6, or Tier 8 reusable one. Abandoned Reach, catch, I mean, Kirsum, uh Unnumbered Stones, and Voxily Meadows. So you can randomly start drawing from those. Remember, for Tier 4, 6, and uh, 8, you can use Silichana to talk with her with the appropriate secret history level for example if you toss her a four for the truth level four one at her she will automatically give you the parasam run which you can try to randomly draw additional ones the thing is you only have two grail people one grail people at 10 is probably going to do you fine just wait until you get the damn dust uh somewhere else or you get the appropriate influence or tool because you can get the tool with pretty soon on but whoops sorry <laughs> wrong window pretty sure on but you know sometimes 
it's not really worth the effort. Like for example, I could have gotten the four point forge tool, the cinnabar anima, but that's out of my way when it comes to this sort of path. So I'm just going to take it as it comes along. So yeah, so that's another way of doing it. And of course, now I'm going to be showing you shortly is like the Guerre Inn. See, this is the Latin book. I didn't randomly get the Latin book here for uh, the bookstore itself. I mean, I didn't. I could spend a Spintra to have Count give it to me, but again, I don't have any Iron Spintra. So in this case, I'm going in for the Guerre Inn. That'll give me the Latin one. Why do I want the Latin one? Because the next one is the Key Garret Hunter's Garret, which will give me the Fusine language, if I already have Latin. Why is the Fusine language important? Because that will give me the tier 10 lantern book, because I'll be able to read it through the Fusine at the Chateau Reveline. So you have to have these pl uh, these uh, uh, paths plotted out. Then if I get the level 10 one, I can then get the remaining two dreams, uh, dream, uh, dream doors, the spider and the peacock. The peacock is my primary entrance. That's why I'm going through a level 10, not a level eight lore for lantern, because in that case, what happens is that, um, once I get a mirror, which again, I'll target an expedition for that one. Don't know at the top of my head. I've got notes. I usually run on these things, but, um, the thing is when I get to that mirror, I'll start and I have a bronze and I have all of these set up properly to get bronze spin, silver spinter as I need. I will go in and get the level 10 and level 12 lores. Now, in order to get to level 14, I'm going to need to uh, get the shop, which is the reason why I'm continuously draining it away, even though I'm just selling most of the box back, because I'll need those for the, lat, the third test to get to level 12 and level 14. As you can remember, the reason we're doing this rather than stopping and enjoying and smelling the uh, bloodstained roses is because it's a test of, of endurance. As you notice, this guy is already up to might three, and I'm not even a third done with the run. He gets to 10 and we probably going to kill me. And right now he's already starting to attack my followers. He'll eventually attack me. And I do not want to see what the higher level might attacks are. So my purpose is to get through this fast. Um, as you can see, I haven't even got all the cult going yet. And I, you can't stop. You cannot stop. I mean, I'm even got Poppy running over here as simultaneously to sacrifice a Pontu so I can get the extra cash, the Spintra and use her as a mentor. And as you can see, I've Almost got the um, level six gravy train running here. Just a little bit more. I'm hoping the books in the Guar Inn, uh, I'd have to double check which ones they are, will be able to pop at least the winter or grail up to level six so I can start cycling these guys out a little faster. See, you have, it's all, basically this is a chess game. It's all about outthinking the system. Now, again, uh, to show you just how insane this can get, I am going to, uh, <laughs> Simultaneously, combine together two forbidden epics to get a level 10 vault because I need for the forge run. I need something in the level 10 and a level 10 vault, and I gotta start looking for it. Grabbing more lore to the stag lore door, going to the Guar Inn, initiating uh, Ladlow into the news, and of course, this one's the interesting one that I also wanted to show you as an aside. This is kind of an advanced version of where there's smoke and where there's fire. You see. Normally, I have you paint at the end where you launch one to three random um, mystiques. But in this case, you can actually carry the mystique through things. Now, I've actually got him running right here. The thing is, there is no way I can get him to stop running because he's going to go through at least another four of these before he gets there. Until I get to the end of the Guar in instant and he's got a possibility of grabbing the notoriety, which will basically be naked at this point. But if I keep the notoriety, if I keep the mystique going up until the very end, I've got that much smoke. I also have at least one I can launch here. Now the thing is, that's all I can because I can't fulfill Mamam Dwizis and Ibim's uh, yeah, Dr. Al, Al Adim's requests quite yet. So I've got to generate as much as you can. So basically I'm carrying the smoke this time inside the painting. And you can just toss in a random influence and boom, there you go. Yes, I'm simultaneously painting, directing my cultist to raid somebody's private library, initiating a cultist into the highest, or, highest mysteries of the forge, and taking a nap so I can enter into the portals of the dimension um, while studying the hidden secret histories. Yep, get used to that sort of uh, that sort of thing happening. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to the next one. Okay, so we're a little later down the road here. So we've completed the Guar In one with relatively little difficulty. And one of the reasons why it's the early ones you want to do in the targeted runs is that it has 
one of your first writes. Now, normally the first write in the previous one I showed you was going to be Winter's write, in which you can use an influence lore and a uh, individual, and you get it from the auction house. The problem is when you're doing this run and you're not cycling through the bookstore first, you're not going to get that because you need to cycle through almost all the books, then go to the auction house to be able to get it. And you have to be really careful because it's easy to lose if you don't have enough funds. But the Guar Inn at the tier four is one of the places where you get two rights. Now, the first one's going to be um, on... Ugh. First one you're probably going to be able to get is on Matthias Amisto Imagiel. Because this one right here is in Aramaic. The other one is in Phygene, which is going to be harder for you to get at this point in the game. But Aramaic is a regular language and you have a tutor here. Again, you could have gotten a book to get it from another expedition. I don't think there's one in the bookstore for Aramaic and Dr. Al Ella Admin will probably be your initial uh, service. When we actually get to it, you'll notice that I've managed to get an Iron Spintra. So like I said, there were three ways of doing this. Sorry, two ways for this for Aramaic. One was the book, which we would have run across, I believe, in the Key Hunter's Garret or the one after that in this path, or I could have gotten the Iron Spintra and Dr. Ibn. Now, usually the second option is what comes up first, and it just happened to be, of course, what happened this time. So what's going to happen is I'm going to give the Iron Spintra to him using study score here. Hang on. Let's get that over with. And then I'm going to get the, um, what's it, uh, the right of... The right of Maps Edge, which I believe is the one that is ingredient, um, lore, and influence. Could be another way. But the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is because I have to, I wanted to prove something to you. You don't actually need to have all three slots on a ritual done. I picked up a decrepitude on purpose, so that means I'm going to require the ritual known as the Forge's Glory in order to be Forge's Redemption, sorry, in order to be able to turn that back into a health. But I can do that because I have, of course level 412 here when it comes to forge and i only need the minimum of five usually 10 or 15 uh forge plus the um a grail and obviously i can grab grail from either the in from uh from either the rose dust or you know i can fortunately it's not a follower one so i can't toss her in or another um uh, or a grail influence I can get from the wood because you can get awareness of appetite. You only need one grail. So therefore, I'm just one of the things and reasons I'm bringing this up is to show you, you have to think outside of the box in this sort of indication. Now, the crepitude, if you randomly got it, you'd be think, oh my God, I'm screwed for the rest of the game. What do I do with it? And yeah, you can kind of do this, but you have to just not stop. If something happens, if a blockage happens, you find the way to move around it. Like I said, Aramaic ritual, no, Aramaic book ritual, and boom, you've got your health back. Okay, and in the midst of other problems that are happening, I at least right now can take care of the right of, uh, take care of Ford's Redemption. See, we get the Furnace Peon, we've got the level two influence, so we have a major, which is a 70% chance of success. It'll cause some stir, you know what I mean? Like, uh, possibly dread and, dread and um, notoriety but frankly i need this gone because oh my god this thing they have really been hit, hammering me on health i've got to get around to increasing my health all right there we go that'll help at the same time i'm gonna have to uh do all these problems one at a time actually yeah i'll have the vitality and possibly may have to break into funds to fix these but yeah, hopefully this will take care of the decrepitude. And like I said, you'll notice I'm running on not much when it comes to resources right now. But you, as long as you're kind of nimble with this, you can get what you need. So that's my that's my recommendation if you're trying this sort of run. Be nimble and don't be afraid to slow things down if you re, if things are getting kind of crazy. Okay, so here we are at the other end of the Key Hunters Garrett's expedition vault as you can see the whole purpose of that everything else is kind of secondary it's a ciphered journal of alessandro lacro alessandro Lacro, the prince sent years and spent years in secret study of the tablets from the fascine marches in central italy his work will allow you to read fascine text but it's written in simple latin cipher you'll need to decipher it since i have the latin card now i have the ability to get the fascine card which will be the first of the four mystic languages we're going to need to break down the uh high level uh the higher level books that we're going to get at the higher level um uh, expeditions. So, in that case, I'm going to skip ahead to when I finish off the next one, the Chateau de Ravelin, which will allow me to be able to 
um, to get the level 10 lantern to get the peacock door. And then I think I'm going to end the episode because this has been going on kind of long. Uh, I've even tried to be cutting as much as possible, but I'm hoping you're still getting the gist of what's going on. And next. Okay, so further on to the concept of allowing opportunities to come your way, I just happened to get the Orchid Transformations Volume 2, which is a Grail 4 um, um, tome. But you notice that I also have another Grail 4, so this will allow me to get the 6 Grail that I will need to finally get Madame Bichette's commission going and get us closer to the, as I say, the commission get gravy train we desperately want. I believe we're only lacking at the moment winter and lantern. So yeah, gotta keep plugging away. Okay, so the next stage in the Express would be to get to the Chateau so we can get the Lantern 10 book. Now, this case, ironically, in order to solve both the um, obstacles in the way, you require 10 Lantern. It's kind of funny that way. So I had to wait till I got two Lantern people, which actually took a hell of a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Anyways, let's move forward. And by the way, you may notice that as these characters pop up that scars are get, like appearing everywhere because apparently this immortal likes to beat people up that's he's not a he's not much of a strategist he sends out his soldiers to beat people up which ironically is making my people stronger i mean he has to get three scars of the same type to kill people and he's doing this over a total of like 20 people so it's not really as effective as he thinks it is i mean right now i've got a pawn with two winter now and an, and an edge who knows maybe i'll they'll actually he'll actually make pawns useful to me who can say anyways let's get through this part okay so several things have happened one we finally managed to whoops we finally managed to get the Level 10 lore from the book that I was ex by translating it from Fusine, the highest source mystery. So we got ch the chateau. Now that gives us the ability to open the two mansis, plus also I can get Dr. Al Dead's um, <sighs> uh, commission finally done. Sorry, I'm talking too much today. I'm brain's kind of fragged. Uh, okay, so in the meantime, we want to ditch as much composure as possible because that will and actually, you know, our um, long can actually grab it with the starlight attack and increase his strength. In addition, if you notice, I've been doing a bunch of painting and other bad things, and I have way too much notoriety going here. Luckily, you can only grab one at a time, and we're going to start losing some of the uh, younger notoriety. In the meantime, I've been producing as much Mystique as I can just to get, if he does pop up, to give a chance for the rest of it to decay. And as you can see, I've been really successful in that. I mean, like, insanely successful. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I must be coming an extremely popular, but soon they'll be saying how, you know, I might... Soon you're probably artist, but soon seeing how my earlier phase was just more creative. Oh, that just came in randomly. Anyways, yeah, okay, so the hidden door is almost done here. Now, boom. The reason I stopped over the Mithrum is I have got an opportunity with the Rite of the Watchman's Sorrow to do something that I've wanted to do since nearly the beginning, and um, don't mind I'm doing things here. All right, grab some passion... Yeah, remember, if you have nothing better to do with the study, always keep increasing the secret lore. We want to get to the uh, tier 14 as quickly as possible. My god, I already have so much glimmering. Why did I get another one? Anyways. Oh, uh, five glimmering. Ah, uh, should have double checked that first. I feel so foolish. Anyways, yeah, it's getting crowded in this particular run. Uh, this is not my organized run. Basically, since it's our speed run, I tend to just keep going. Anyways, we generate more mystique and get somebody else on our side. Keep going, people. Let's make sure this one's not going to shut down on me. Okay, colors at night. I uh, don't think I need that. We're just looking for mystique. Yeah, man, I hate it when he sold out. Painting just became crap then. Eh, not much. Anyways, yep, there we go. There's going to be a lot of damage here, but... I wonder if he'll get to it in time. 182 seconds, just means he's got three runs to try to grab one of those, and I'm going to keep pumping this stuff out as much as possible, because I got my passions back up and running. Excellent. And I'm sick. Oh, that's not so excellent. I don't have a vitality going either. Oh, six. Wait, wait. If I put the vitality in the painting as an influence, then it will preserve, and hopefully I'll catch it in time to get to the uh, sickness. So if worse comes to worse, I'll just buy, I'll just buy some medicine. All right, all right, treasures library. Yep, we finally got it. All right. Oh, there goes one. You've missed one. We've lost one uh, notoriety. There's the unnecessary glimmering, and we'll just start the 
process, come on, starting to get another level 10 this, uh, tier expedition running. Uh, come on, we got a little time here. I'm going to leave this open for that purpose. That's going to be a restlessness, which some cases I can use, in some cases I can't. All right, so, yeah. Sometimes dread has purpose, but I've got two potential dreads siphling up here, which means I should get rid of it as quickly as possible. All right, so grab all this. Grab... E. Come on, mouse, help. Don't don't mess with me here. Okay, grab the vitality, which I did manage to save, so that's going to save my arse there. Glimmering is out of control. That's soon to be burning off anyways. And we've got more work to do. Now, the thing about this is I'm going to need my... Where is my fourth pat? Where is my other passion? Still stuck in here? No. Uh, sigh. I guess I must have burned that one out too. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So yeah, we finally managed to get the deeper sanctuary, which gives me the cracked moonstone and the refugion. So I have the choice of making either a four or eight point um, tool here for the light. But the thing I really wanted was the mithrin. Yeah, the. A Galabian Manacle, which is named after a um, Roman Emperor, by the way. I mean, he was into some kinky shit. Anyways, so, here's the reason why. There's the 8 there, and there's Ludow. Boom. See, remember I told you how wounds can make people um, more powerful? This is because he now has a two... Wounds are associated with three things. Edge, Knock, and Winter. Death, Injury, and the Wounds. The Wounds in Between Worlds. The Gates that allows to summon things. So, he gained... From one wound, the two points of aspect of knock, which is enough for a minor summoning. Now that I have this eight pointer here, I can now do an eight plus two, eight winter, two um, knock, and ten forge, which allows me to summon without notice, sacrificing anything, because as long as you get all the numbers properly, you don't need to actually sacrifice anything to get a creature of smoky deception, which I do want because I'm going to throw him in here as he's going to be more effective than a human being because he has two aspects can protect against two different types of attack at 70% as opposed to one at 90%. Okay, just one of you lot. What's really funny is I just happened to get the Cinnabar animal and I don't even have to throw in lore for the basic summonings anymore. The basic initiations, I just show this really cool amulet to them and they become, oh my god, I love it. Yeah, that's a really strange way of saying these things. Anyways, I could also put the headquarters here, but I got issues with that. Sanctuary for both of these would allow me to bypass Glimmering, but I really want that bookshelf, which means that I gotta get back to thumbing through their, their uh, stock while looking to uh, bankrupt them. Yeah, I'm not a good person. I'm mean, actually the number two person. Oh, not so good person. All right, so... Hmm, knowledge goes here. Hmm, another one of those. Come on, come on, dispose, dispose, dispose. Ah, there goes the dread. Uh-oh, dread trap in play, and I'm in trouble. Two dread already. Yeah, that's great. Um, Yeah, I need to get drunk. I need to seriously just get drunk. And then I'm also going to try to do... Um, make myself happier by painting, even though I've been doing that a little too much. Traveling at Night, Volume 1. That book is what? Yeah, I do have a list of the books here, simply because there is no way I'm going to remember all of this. Uh, that's the Cult Simulator Wiki at uh, cultsimulator.gampedia.com if you uh, want to play along at home. Anyways, traveling and uh, traveling at night. What was that? Volume 1? Oof. Yep, Volume 1. Gives me a... Probably not going to want this one. Probably going to sell it back. Pity that it doesn't have the same Easter egg as Teresa's. Get to that. Traveling at night. Tra Seriously. The, 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 thus. I hate it when they put thus as the first word. If you're going to do titles, you got to take out the when you want to alphabetize. Moth 2 in erudition. I don't need this. So it's going back to the auction house so it's not cluttering things up, which would get our money back. Again, this takes longer, but it's less expensive. Anyways, another pawn. Great. I have somebody else to sacrifice. Uh, what else we got? Uh, I should probably take care of that lantern thing, but in the meantime, we're going to just keep talking about scraps. Hopefully this works. And producing more Mystique, of course. 
So hopefully the dread doesn't kill us. And we now have Kaglin, eight house stars, eight hammer, eight moth, eight hammer, eight forge. Sometimes I just call it hammer. Sometimes I call the uh, edge blade or knife just because it's named after the symbol. I mean, it's easy with lantern. I mean, a lantern is lantern. Really, if you come right down to it. Uh, okay, so if you're going to paint this and make myself feel happy, we're going to use a glimmering for it. For uh, influence. Save this glimmering over to use for the search. This is now idle, which is not a good thing. What I want to do... Hey, wait a minute. Where's... Oh, for crying out loud, did that not start? That's not a good thing. More opium. I need more opium. There's the passion that went awry. Oh, you stole some cash. Seriously, dude? Fine. Take it. I've got some more. Colors of night. Nope. All right. So intuition, glimmering, boom. Yeah, I'm still recording. I know it's not anything really super popular, but that I'm doing right now, but it's kind of showing you how the rhythm of this game is going to go on the Apostle side. You've got to keep moving. You've got to ignore what he's doing, slow it down as much as possible, and just run towards the end. All right. There you go. That will help significantly. <sighs> okay. Better focus. Let's see which one gets taken. Boom. That one gets taken. This one will still be around at the exact, yep, for seven seconds longer than it has to be, so we'll be fine there. That's the protection against fascination. Collection of essays. Ooh. I can probably go... Actually, I'm just going to wait till I get all four essay books, and then I'm just going to Boom, bring out my scholarship, because it's not really a super thing I have to worry about at the moment. Cop's still going, and he still doesn't have the damn last notoriety. Damn, I didn't expect it to be this effective. But apparently it is. Uh, the problem is I can't do it again. Passion's expelled, and these are the only things protecting it. So little by little, the cops are wearing me down. That's how the state operates. Just keeps trying to wear you down. Anyways, so yeah, the Calgain. This, when I have the opportunity... We'll replace one of these guys. Probably at the rate's going, it's going to be Violet, which is good, because she's got five Winter, which is good against um, Starlight, but he's got eight Moth, which is better against Starlight. So that will be workable. And then he's going to continue to keep up the edge. Now, what I really want, by the way, is I really want is the um, Made in the Mirror, because at two, at 10 Edge, 10 um, Winter, she can protect 90% against physical attacks and against... Um, Starlet Tax, which is the ones I hate the most. I don't really care about Intrigue. It steals money. Who cares? No, I get some Mystique. I usually am using Mystique for my advantage. <sighs> Any case, I'm not entirely sure that this part, what next part's going to be terribly interesting, so I'm going to skip ahead. Okay, hang on. Okay, so now that we've actually gotten the Stum Canister from the Auction House, we grabbed the Sunset Right. And when I was able to do that, I summoned, as you noticed before, the Kalingi, which I can do now because of the scars without a uh, any sort of fuel for the uh, ritual. And it's an old trick. Now, you see, the Kalingi has an 8 Moth, 8 Forge. But if you put in a Restlessness, which of course is an, is an influence, it gives you both the remaining two Forge that you require to make ten for the summoning of the name emanation, but it also gives the two Lantern. Now, if you grab the Raw Prophet, which you've seen me do a lot if you look at the previous previous stage with a um, Fleeting Reminiscence or a, a Fascination card, and you dump this guy in here, he gives you both the two Grail he needs to complete to ten, and the two forge that is required to summon the uh, name emanation of the Grail. All you need to do is toss in a level five, um, a well, level six, really, lore, and boom, you can summon these. You can use one spirit to summon another. In this case, the reason I'm doing that is the name emanations possess the ability to tutor you in the appropriate language uh, they have for it. Deep Manadric, for example, with Forge of Days, but you're going to have to have the root languages here. In this case, I believe it's Aramaic in order to be able to do so. So once I get this one summoned, I'll simply use him as a tutor, grab that a language card, and now I've got one, well now two of the four languages I'll need to translate the uh, documents that we'll get from the tier 14 vaults. Because once you get past like tier eight, tier 10, virtually everything is in these mystic languages. That's great, too dread. Anyways, let's get back to the uh, situation. Okay, so at this point, I've got most of what I wanted down to. As you can see, I did use the level 10 lantern lore from the Chateau to get me all these entrances. Now, I'm currently going to be working on 
or is it Kelligan Scratch, where I can get the broken glass, uh, the broken uh, glass watch. What is it called? Watchman's glass or wildering mirror. That's it. Where I can get the broken wildering mirror, repair it, and then use that to access the peacock's door if I need to. In addition, I finally managed to suck Moreland's shop closed, and with it, get the last bit of lore that will allow me to combine these two and get the whole. Um, engine running down here so I can get all of these guys going. So now that I have that, the the money for nothing um, commission engine going, now that I have the lore all in its proper place, now that I am going to be having the library as my, as my headquarters, so the ability to start combining level 10 and higher lore, then we can truly open up and um, get into the end game for which particular run you're doing. As you can see, I've been trying to show you, and I'm sorry about all the cutting, but this has taken an enormous amount of time. Um, and I don't think you wanted to watch me the whole three and a half hours while I was doing it. But as you can see, you have to do, in order to do the express, you have to very targeted results. As you can see, you're not going to be at full power when you're doing it either. I've had to suffer some serious indignities. And even if I wasn't going to be doing this on an apostle run, it would still it would still be a lot of as uh, work in order to get the um, evening I'll express out. Now the thing is, I realize seeing it in this sort of cut up way, where I'm mentally doing it from a couple of notes, the wiki and my uh, and my own uh, memories that. This is probably not the best way of learning it. If you want me to do a dedicated um, uh, Evening Isle Express one where I go over like the flow charts of which locations, which tutors, which books, and which rights you're going to need to be able to get to access the four level 14 vaults quickly and get those books broken down, I'll do that on a standard um, aspirant run. If you, that's what you're interested in, if you let me know, let me know in the comments below. For the moment, however, you can see the way I, way I make where I run it is I run parallel tracks. In other words, I have an objective. There's at least two ways to get that objective, and I'm going to figure out which way I'm going to do so by which obstacles show up in my path. Do I get the tutor first for the language? Probably not. Do I get the um? Do I get the uh? That's usually not the way. Do I get the book from the vault or do I get it from the bookstore? The bookstore is random. I know where the vault is, but the vault takes time to get. Whichever way you happen to do it. Now, as you can see, just by going through and without the library so far from Moreland's bookstore, I've managed to get up to the 10th, uh, two level 10 um, lords, and this will help, and I'll get the epics going, and I'll start roaching the 14th. But at this point, I have to specifically veer off into the forge path, which is why I'm going to stop the basic episode for Apostle, and move into um, doing the forge specific ending, which is the Dawnbreaker. And oh my God, is that inappropriate um, title? Because if you know what you're doing, what the forge, the uh, forge immortal from the previous one, what Randolph Carter is having red shirt number one do, it is horrifying and it is beautiful. And we will go into that next episode when we deal with the forge apostle ending. Anyway, so this has been Fantastic World saying farewell from Lovecraft Country and cult simulator tips and tricks. And I do hope you enjoy this episode. Okay, as you know, this is a temporary series in between two, and I'm still showing the first signs of the series that I meant to do before this one called Lust from Beyond on the Horizon. Now, what will happen is probably I will have the Lust from Beyond Scarlet um, prologue done for the Halloween week. Don't know if it's be Wednesday or Saturday, depending on how scheduling goes. And then I will be waiting for the actual episode to drop, but still running these things because apparently some people like to read them. It's like become my number two uh, series on the channel so far. Um, read them, watch them. Silly me. We don't do reading anymore. We're modern people. Anyways... Yeah, so like I said, the next episode will be the end of this. And when we roll back to another, uh, finish this one and roll back to Aspirant, I'm probably going to do finally do the F the Police episode where I show you how to kill the Suppression Bureau with minimal effort. And we will do the um, probably the other Apostle endings, the Dancer DLC. I can even move into the more complicated ones. And oh my God, if you've met, if we actually get to the Exile game, which is like new game plus plus plus, um. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting because I haven't finished that one yet myself. I really got frustrated the first run. So if we tackle it again, it might not be as smooth as some of the other episodes. But hey, if you find it entertaining, you find it entertaining. Anyways, like, share, subscribe. And if you really like it down below, there are links to the Gumroad payment platform, which I don't use Patreon for mm, reasons. Most of them involve it being bought out by venture capital. But um, the thing is, I use the payment program and I have stretch goal and the second stretch goal that we have upcoming up, which is probably $6 from this point, is 
another episode a month. And if that's the case and you know, that happens in this happens to be the series that true is popular enough to have a semi regular one. I'll do it. I like this game, too. In fact, I get kind of OCD about the whole thing because I really like a challenge. I mean, the only game I found harder than this is XCOM and I love XCOM. So, yeah, I'm kind of a masochist when it comes to strategy games. Anyway, so I will see you next time.